Now uh, we move to third presentation. It's a professional presentation. Uh, Terra Me, which has been uh, working with Nep Nepal Geo Technical Society. So Terra Me is a French company. They are working in the field of soil reinforcement. Uh, recently, they have tied up with Sundar Kriti Consultant of Nepal and planning to work in Nepal as well. Uh, they are also supporting us for this serial jewelry uh, ceremony also. So Mr. Antonu Adhikari and Saikat Chatterjee will be presenting their professional presentation. Then we'll have some discussion on this presentation also. Thank you. A very good afternoon to all the dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, who are present uh, in this hall. Uh, we are going to present uh, our company, uh, our technology, our products and services. We are uh, representing a company called Terra Army International. It's a French company. And uh, I'm being accompanied by uh, Mr. Atunu Adhikari. He will take charge of the presentation after a while. And my colleague uh, Sunip, and our local uh, associate Sundar Kriti consultants, so Rajiv, uh, Rajesh uh, Naipune. And uh, this presentation will uh, cover you know, uh, our technology part of it. And uh, initially, it will be the introduction part. So the technology part will be uh, taken care of by uh, Mr. Adhikari, who is uh, in charge of our design and development and engineering part. First of all, uh, Nepal Geotechnical Society is celebrating the uh, Silver Jubilee of uh, its incorporation. So it's a big and sincere congratulations from uh, our team. And we would like to thank uh, the society for giving us this opportunity to uh, make ourselves visible in the Nepal uh, Geotechnical Fraternity. We have been uh, operating in the world since 1963, but Nepal is uh, our new venture. So uh, this kind of uh, visibility is going to help us in future. That's, that's what we, uh, we can hope. And uh, we... So this uh, Terra Army is, you know, it's a company from a group called Vinci. Vinci uh, Construction and Concessions. And Vinci is a French company having turnover of around uh, 44 billion euros last year. And uh, Vinci has got Solitach Fresine Group, which is a specialized group uh, within the company. And we are one of them. Apart from us, uh, it, it's Fresine International, who is uh, more specialized in uh, stay cable and post tensioning. Then we have Solitage Bashi into uh, ground engineering. We have Minad into soil improvement, Nuvia into nuclear technologies and innovations. And uh, Sixth Sense is a company into uh, structural monitoring. If we talk about uh, the group, uh, then uh, we should remember, uh, we always remember. Uh, in fact, uh, Eugene Fresine, who has uh, invented uh, the pre-stressed uh, concrete structure and started the company called uh, Fresine International. And uh, Henry Wiedel, who invented reinforced earth. Reinforced earth is considered to be one of the biggest invention in civil engineering. Because in civil engineering, we don't have many things to invent. But uh, reinforced earth after reinforced concrete is considered to be one of the biggest invention. And nowadays, reinforced earth is uh, quite a generic name in the, in, the, in the construction industry. So Henry Vidal, he invented reinforced earth in 1963, and he uh, patented the technology in 1964. And our global presence in more than 45 countries, and we are operating projects in about 100 countries. And Sundar Kriti is our new addition. 
uh, in uh, the Nepal market. So if we talk about our business, what exactly we do, so this slide would probably give you a better idea what exactly we do. In, in the hall, you have seen retain, cross, and protect. So what is retain? We, we talk about retaining structure. Retaining structure, not the conventional retaining structure, but uh, it is about uh, soil reinforcement where geotechnics uh, are involved. So we uh, talk about those kind of retaining structure. At one point of time, retain, uh, reinforced retaining structure was considered to be an alternative solution, but now it has become more popular and more generic in nature. Cross is more like precast concrete structure for crossing structures. Crossing structures means bridges, culverts, and there are some extensions in rockfall canopies also, cut and cover tunnels, these kind of stuff. And protect is our uh, protection business line uh, against uh, natural disaster like flood or riverbank erosion, scour, landslide, these kind of uh, protection uh, measures. Basically, we apply our techniques in that. So from here, hence forward, uh, Mr. Adhikari will uh, present uh, the technical part of uh, our business line uh, in more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Saikat. And once again, very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege uh, to be here uh, to give and share our knowledge, our experience, uh, what we did in the last 50 years. So uh, continuing with this uh, section of uh, retain, cross, and protect business, I will be elaborating what we mean by retain. So retaining earth, so in any form, uh, that's what we say, in any geo metrical conditions, uh, irrespective of its height, geometry, and condition. So it can be a waterfront, it can be a cut slope, it can be a filled up slope, or it can be a vertical wall, it can be a steep slope. So there is no uh, limitation of the geometry that we talk about. So what, uh, in brief, uh, what we are doing, uh, what this invention has does, is converted the conventional concrete structure, which is so thick, and it's now becoming more and more expensive, as you know, availability of aggregate, uh, mining. We have reduced it to a thinnest possible concrete applications, and all rest is a natural material. So you can see the uh, thicker RCC concrete, which is converted into a very thin, which is nowadays we are using even 140 millimeter thick concrete panel. And rest is soil with some reinforcement. So what we are doing, we are actually building the retaining structure using soil. And with a little amount of concrete, or sometimes we can replace the concrete with a steel plate or with a steel mesh, as you can see in some of the uh, pictures that you have displayed. And then reinforcement. So the, that's where the word is coming, terre army in French, and in English it's convert, if you convert in Google, it will say reinforced earth. Uh, so this is what we have started uh, uh, in 1963, 1970s we started using this concrete panel and the system was patented. In India we started in 95 and now it become a very uh, useful commodity because uh, today we are probably building uh, thousands of kilometers of highway and when you talk about thousands of kilometer highway, the retaining wall plays a very, very vital role in terms of construction activity. So we are saving a lot of carbon footprint, actually, by converting all the concrete structure into a reinforced soil structures. So it's become a commodity now. Uh, we, we are probably building more than 10 lakh square meter of, maybe more, uh, in India itself. Uh, so this is how it looks, a typical approach. Uh, and from inside, this is how it looks, with different possibilities of reinforcement. Uh, so what kind of reinforcement? We are using steel. Uh, I'll be a little elaborate later on, uh, why is steel, why synthetic, where and how. So, uh, and also synthetic. Uh, and synthetic in different forms, polyester, PVA, uh, and also sometimes in the ladder format. So if you talk about polyester enforcement, which is today very common, uh, and uh, we have been building different kind of structure using um, 
synthetic reinforcement in the form of uh, polyester. So the polyester is the main element which provides the strength in terms of tension. And you can see what kind of reinforcement that we are using. Uh, and we have some display. If anyone interested can go and see the samples. So they are actually polyester and then coated with LLDP is a one type of reinforcement. And in addition, uh, we are also using different widths depending on the design. Also, what we call is the eco stuff because polyester also uh, has a issues uh, under certain environment, especially if you have a pH value more than nine. Actually, you cannot use polyester. So in that situation, we have to go for what you call eco strap. So the strap is again the polyester is replaced with PVA. So the PVA will have a very high durability uh, because the structure life we are talking is 100 year at least, at least 100 year design life. And when we talk about 100 year design life, the what environment, what condition we are using the reinforcement, the knowledge of material and the chemistry is very important. And that's why it becomes different kind of soil reinforcement and different kind of polymer that we use in our solutions. And also HA, which is basically high adherence, because it works through friction, as you understand the soil and the reinforcement friction. Sometimes by using an innovative geometry of the reinforcement, we increase the coefficient of friction in the soil. And that gives you a very higher advantage in terms of the design. So that's what we call high adherence reinforcement. And then comes the steel reinforcement. Uh, well, now we started with steel, galvanized, and then we moved to synthetic. Uh, the synthetic uh, quality of the synthetic reinforcement, quality of polyester has improved. So we can produce the similar strength using polyester and steel. But still there is a difference. A plastic will be always a plastic. The deformation level of a synthetic goes up to 15%, sometimes 12%. You can improve it. But the steel, still, it doesn't elongate. It's nothing compared to a 10, 12% elongation if you talk about yield strength of a steel. So that's where the application comes in picture. So when we decide what reinforcement we want to use, we also think about deformation. So if you want to build a very critical structure with high loading, for example, bridge abutment, of course, steel is the choice because it doesn't deform. Some situation deformation plays a more important role than the other criteria, which is the tensile criteria. So that's how we choose a different kind of reinforcement in our different kind of solutions. So going through uh, some of the slides quickly, I'll pass on. Uh, I have to also maintain the time. We are already crossed, probably. Uh, these approaches, we can do all kind of finishes as you wish, which is probably look impossible with a probably in some kind of solutions. For example, any aesthetic. You want to print your picture, we can do that on concrete. We have the solution. So any aesthetic is feasible, anything. Uh, so these, these are some of the examples. We have done uh, so many uh, structures. So now we, I, I will give a little brief uh, about when it comes to the geometry also. We have been building approaches all over the world in last 50 years. And the height range varies from 10, 12, 14 meter. So no problem. And today, many other people are also building. But when it goes to a limit beyond 20, 25, 30, 40, it's not the same. It's not just mathematics. When you design a wall, a 10, 12 meter structure and a 45 meter structure, mathematically it is the same, same earth pressure, same theory. But when you design a 45 meter, it is not just mathematics. That's where the engineering comes in picture. What engineering, what detailing you put into your system will govern how the structure is going to behave. Because it's not only about the mathematics, the forces, it's also about the deformation, deformability of the structure. How flexible you can make your structure is going to decide how the structure is going to perform. This is an airport project, a Seattle airport in USA. It's a 45 meter high structure. So we have the know-how, experience, expertise. What intrinsic value, you know, insight that you have to provide into this kind of structures in terms of connection system. The load at the connection that will come between the concrete panel and the soil reinforcement is very, very vital. The compressibility of the panel is very vital. The detailing that goes, the bearing, that kind of rubber pad that you use, everything makes very, very important when you talk about 40, 45 meter structures. So that's how our strength. That's where we, we can not only give you a mathematics, we can give you a complete solution using engineering. And now when you talk about environment, uh, we are everywhere. We are into river, we are into 
coastal, we are into canals. Uh, sometimes it is misinterpreted that reinforced earth can be only done in a dry condition. Uh, it's completely incorrect. We have 40% of our structures are seafront or a riverfront or a waterfront structure, either reservoir or in the form of dam. We have built dams uh, using a mechanically stabilized earth towers. So there are several examples uh, where waterfront structure can be used. Again, when it comes to hills, again, the engineering is not the same when you talk about a plane. Also, what additional measures you take in terms of drainage plays a very important role. I have a few interesting slides for you. How drainage plays an important role. Also, constructability in a hill, uh, movement of heavy equipment is always difficult. So what system you propose so that it is easy to construct, you don't need heavy equipment, and at the same time, you maintain the same strength. And that's why you can see different kind of facing comes in picture. So what we use is a basically a galvanized wire mesh, 8mm uh, dia, uh, welded wire mesh, very light to carry, two person can carry. So no hydra, no crane is required, like a panel which, is, which weights a ton sometimes. So it's very difficult. So in a hilly, hilly train, we can also build different kind of structures under different environment, inclined, vertical, all kind of solutions. Also, in a hill, there is a problem of space. Sometimes you have to build very tall structures, more than 20, 30 meter high, and you have no space at the foundation. Uh, you have hardly two meter, three meter space. So how do you go about it? And that's why we talk about Terra Link, or what you call a hybrid solutions. And that's how uh, we can uh, build a very tall structure, even if you give me one meter space. So that's uh, how our expertise in terms of hilly trains. I'll be elaborating this part in the, uh, in the last session. Uh, crossing, I'll go very quickly. It's a precast solution. We do arches, boxes, all kind of. The only difference in terms of engineering is that when you design an arch in a stad uh, and you, you, you get a very thick arch concrete. And the reason is that uh, when you design uh, those arches, you consider only as a structural engineer. But when you mix geotechnics and structure, the solution, the result can be completely different. So when I am designing art structure, I am not only considering this, the, the uh, structural part, also the geotechnical part and the interface between the structure and the geotechnics. And that's why the finite element comes in picture. And that's how I can produce even a 15 meter span arch as thin as 250, 300 millimeter. So that's, that's where the structure and soil plays the important role in terms of their interface. Because when you actually build this structure, they deform. And the earth pressure is no more at rest or active. So it keeps on changing as you progress. And that makes the, uh, makes the engineering a little different than a conventional solution. And this is the precast arches. It's very easy, fast. Uh, quality no problem because you'll be doing factory uh, construction. No traffic uh, hazard. You can see we have built even underpasses when the railway is running. So no stoppage to the traffic. So these are the few advantages. And you can do multiple arch. You can convert into a major bridge, into a uh, arch structure, something like this, quickly. And also like this, that structures that we have been building. We have also done boxes, uh, varying sizes, 2 meter by 2 meter to 10.5, even 12 meter by 5 meter, 6 meter. Uh, generally, uh, 2 meter, 3 meter sizes are easy. I will not say it's many people may be doing. But uh, seldom you will find uh, someone doing uh, 12 meter by 5 and 6 meter precast boxes. So we have done those kind of structures uh, for railways, for highways. So that's precast uh, technology uh, coming to the cross. In addition, what we do also is a pure abutment. That's what I'm taking about steel reinforcement, where deformation can be very, very critical. That means I'm eliminating all the pier in your abutments. The piers and the piles are replaced with a MSC wall. And I'll be res resting the bridge deck on the MSC wall. So that's how what we call a pure abutment. These are the bridge abutments where you can see only MSC wall. There is no pile and piers, and rest is soil, and the deck is actually resting on the soil. And that's how the structure can be designed. Very quick and economical uh, in terms of uh, both time saving and cost. Uh, this is another example in India. There are several uh, bridge abutments that we have been building now. Uh, this is a 20 meter span bridge. We can do 30 meter, 35 meter, no problem. Uh, so that's about the crossing part, protecting, uh, protecting nature. So it's water and land, landslide. Uh, I think we had uh, previous nice uh, sessions on 
uh, these subjects. Uh, uh, what we are doing, we are actually giving solutions against landslide. Uh, so this is a project in Tindharia. It's uh, uh, near Darjeeling. Uh, when you go from Siliguri to Darjeeling, uh, there is a road. A heritage railway track goes uh, to the Darjeeling. And one of the portion uh, slided in 2012, if I remember, during a, uh, uh, after the earthquake. And most of the landslide will occur in a rainfall. So that's, that's the triggering factor. Uh, we should not forget the water. Uh, so this is how uh, the landslide looks uh, once after the landslide. And the road is cut off for almost four years. Uh, there is no connectivity. People have to use alternate route. Uh, so we came up with a solution, uh, what we call uh, is a Terra link solution. Uh, the height is 100 meter. Uh, so this is not only restoration, that means you have to prevent further landslide, also you have to widen because the road is not there. And that's why the trailer link come in picture. So we, we had to stabilize using uh, soil nail, uh, ground anchors, uh, all those kind of stuff. Just to give you a brief, what is trailer link? So this is how the uh, a typical landslide will look like uh, when it is handed over uh, to us in most of the cases. Once the landslide occurs, or about to occur. Uh, steep slope, uh, very little space, so you have to first stabilize. So what we call them is a top-down method. That means you have to also ensure the safety of the people who is going to work. So we first stabilize from top to bottom. That's the approach. It's always difficult because there is no space. Now you can challenge that how you are going to do the drilling. We, we are doing it already. Uh, even as deep as 15, 25 meter deep. Anchors, nails. Uh, in this situation where you are, we are hanging and we are drilling. And you, the soil is also not very friendly. Uh, they are wearing weathered rock, clay in the top, of course overburden in the top. And sometimes we have found a lot of gabions inside. Probably a lot of landslide restoration has been done with layers of gabions uh, and it didn't work. So in, in historically, so when we are drilling, we encountered so many gabions. So it's boulders mixed with gabions, and you can imagine drilling through those is a challenge always. So there are different drilling method techniques available, and it is possible. Nothing is impossible. Yes, what cost, what time is the question. But yes, it is possible. So we do this drilling part from top-down approach, and the biggest advantage you can see, the traffic can continue. No risk of safety because I am designing the structure in such a way that when I am doing the nailing, I ensure also that the road is safe. And at the same time, when we are doing top-down method, the people who will be working at the bottom will be also safe. So there is no risk of falling from the top. So that's what we call top-down method. So once you finish the top-down, you need to also put some, some kind of facing, you know. Uh, it's, you cannot keep the... Because this work goes on three months, four months, you will have intermediate rainfalls. You need to ensure that the soil doesn't erode. So there is a facing, as you can see, is a steel mesh uh, facing that is clayed, uh, you know, attached along with the soil nail. And then we start the bottom part, the filling part, once we finish the soil nail part. So the bottom part is, you can see the space. And this wall, this structure is 35 meter height. Or the, on the back where we displayed is the finished structure, is the same structure. Now, within this space, we had to walk and we have to build a 35 meter structure. So how it is possible? It is only possible by this method where we transfer this load to the nails. So the nails are drilled and grouted and they are in situ reinforcement. And this is a filled up soil where we will be putting our soil reinforcement, which is a, like a, any MSE wall, which is a reinforced earth wall. And we are combining these both together. And that's how you are building these structures layer by layer from bottom. Now you are going bottom to top. Filling up in layers, putting the reinforcement, and connecting. This is very important. How you are connecting this soil reinforcement with the nails. There has to be a force transfer mechanism. If you don't connect, this will collapse. Then there is no meaning. So this connection is, plays a very important role, and it is a mechanical connection. It's a direct link. You cannot rely on any other system. So the nails and the reinforcements are directly connected. And then you continue this building up until you finish and you have a widened road with the traffic on top. This is how it looks once it is finished. Uh, so uh, design part, I'll just touch base. Uh, uh, we have already crossed, uh, spent a lot of time. 
So the designing is based on completely sleep cycle global stability analysis, and we are using different kind of software. It's not just relying on one method. Uh, numerical analysis also to check what is the tension coming in the reinforcement, and then validating by finite element modeling. So in such complex structure, this is what uh, uh, what method that uh, we adopt. And the, the, when you do the global stability, you ensure that you cover all the circles. Uh, this is a cross section how it looks the 100 meter height, uh, and we have got ground anchors and soil nail in combination. Uh, quickly, soil nails uh, they are fully threaded bars, uh, and we always recommend fully threaded bars. Uh, at site, you will have always variation. Uh, a fully threaded bar is, is, is an advantage because of the durability. They are all galvanized. The thread is, you can see the samples, it has got a trapezoidal thread. And if you want to talk about durability inside this soil, even if we are grouting, galvanization is must because the corrosion you cannot stop. The grout is going to crack eventually. Uh, so uh, the, the, the threading process actually also gives life to the nail because the thread are wider, so you have a good quality galvanization in the nail. That's what is important, uh, the quality of galvanization. And then you can connect with coupler and then plates and nuts. There are a lot of accessories that goes into. Similarly, for the ground anchors that we have used, we have used cable anchors uh, in the particular project. Uh, this is where I want to spend a little more time on drainage. This is the most important element. Whatever you do, if we don't address the drainage system, things will have problem either today or tomorrow, because the water will find its path by its own way. So you have to give and design the path before it finds its own. That's the key. So that's why the, both the surface and the internal drainage system is very, very vital. I will have certain interesting slide. Uh, I don't have much time to explain in detail. But what I want to express here, when you design in a hill, there will always be a phreatic line. Natural fretting line, what we call in a state of equilibrium. That means in a hill, if you drill 20, 30 meters, you will find a water. There is a water line. And this is, the, in a normal hill, when it is a stable condition, the fretting line is also stable. It's in a state of equilibrium. That means there is no additional pore pressure which is developing as there is a rainfall or seasonal change. And if you have a pore pressure development, there will be a landslide. So when we build any structure, when we created manual uh, human disturbance, what do we have to ensure that this equilibrium of water should maintain? And that's where your stability comes in picture. When you do a design with a phreatic line and, and, and we change the phreatic line, we increase the pore pressure, your factor of safety will drastically reduce. And sometimes, even by increasing this water line by 10 meter, you will have a failure. So that's how the important the water line is. And that's why the subsurface drainage plays the most important role in your structure. This is the same structure when we started filling up. This is just the cutting nailing portion. Now what you will observe carefully is a pipe here where we drilled. And probably there is some software glitch. But you can see the pressure that it came out. We have drilled up to 30 meter depth. And this is the pressure. So that means that the water needs a smooth path always for your structure. So we drilled almost at every tier up to 25, 30 meter, and we provided these drainage paths. And that's how the drainage system is currently working. If I go to the next slide, this is a build-up structure. And you can see how many pipes. There are six or seven pipes. And they're not just shallow depth. They are almost 25, 30 meter deep. So the freighting line, all the water that is pressure is coming is actually releasing uniformly. So there is no additional pore pressure that will develop if you have a good drainage system. That's what I just wanted to em emphasize uh, on these particular slides. Quickly, uh, so how difficult the situation was in terms of construction uh, phases. This is a top view. You can see this is a road. And we are doing the filling layer by layer. And this, these reinforcements are actually connected with the nails. And this is the completed picture. So you have a widening road. The road was 7 meter. Now we have a 12 meter widened road. Uh, also, uh, this is common. Uh, if you don't have widening issue, you can just stabilize using high tensile wire mesh. So the only difference is we are promoting a very high tensile wire mesh. Uh, because the uh, tensile strength of the wire mesh plays a very important role uh, when it comes to the uh, facing stability. 
Uh, we also do uh, different kind of uh, risk mitigation, uh, rockfall, avalanche. Yeah, I know this time is running out. Uh, so the rockfall can be using crossing structures. Uh, just quickly as analogy, how the precast structures we are building. So like that, we can build and finish a structure, and we can use this solution, cut and cover rockfall protection, like this. Uh, quickly about uh, our another protection for the river, what we call take revetment. Uh, this is an alternative to a stone pitching or a, or a gabion even, uh, when you do a river protection, also for a launching apron. If you have a high cover, this solution is very, very, uh, very, very suitable. Uh, as an alternative solution, the cost of the stone is more and more uh, becoming very, very rare and very, very expensive. So it's a concrete lined mattress, and it has got a uniformity. Uh, that means it's a grouted mattress. Uh, what we are using geosynthetic only as a form liner, and then ultimately the concrete is grouted. And the installation process is very simple. We can just lay the synthetic uh, former. We can explain you later on if you you are interested. And we have finished this kind of structures in. 1.5 kilometer in 17 days, very quick. We can do underwater installations. Uh, this is another river front structure. So this is a launching apron, uh, and this is the guide one uh, for the protection system. And the launching apron actually works uh, because there are cables. So the cables are going from one end to the other end. So there is a continuity. So the blocks are all integrated. It cannot go anywhere. So very interesting uh, for a river front protection system. Very effective if you have boulders. Uh, because it has got high capacity, M20 grade uh, grout, so it will not going to damage so easily. Thank you so much for your kind patience. Thank you. Any questions uh, we can uh, discuss later or maybe uh, we can have one-to-one -one discussion. Thank you. Uh,